Hey guys, Corey here, and today we're going to show you how to install wheel spacers. Now this is the bolt-on kind, not the slide-on kind. The slide-on kind, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. The reason is, is there's little threads here on the studs, much like the studs on your car. And when you put one of those slide-on spacers on, you... Um, you take away the threads you take away from the threads that the lug nuts can actually grab a hold of and if that lug nut starts to loosen up your wheel could fall off not good um, this like I said is a bolt-on spacer what will happen is the car's stock studs will slide through this hole here these lug nuts will come off and bolt on there and your nice lug nuts that go on the outside will go on these studs and out here is where your wheel will sit against. Now there are a few things I'd like to mention. Um, don't cheap out when you buy these because this one this is made out of billet aluminum um, but don't don't go on eBay and buy the cheap ones. Go find a find a company that is well known. Do your research. Um, I'm not gonna say where I got these from because I don't have permission to mention them. But uh, uh, these are made in the USA. Um, I can't really see anything that says, but. They're made in the USA, and they uh, they cost a little bit more. For a decent set of wheel spacers, I wouldn't spend less than $100. Um, there are cheaper ones on eBay, like I said, but are you willing to risk uh, damaging your vehicle, uh, injuring you or somebody else to save 40 or 50 bucks? I'm not willing to do that. So, spend the extra money, get the good product. Um, this is what I got, uh, and I'll show you this thing called hub centric. If you don't know what that is, I'll show you what that is. Uh, but you want to try and get a hub centric wheel spacer so it fits right. This particular one is a five on four and a half, and it doesn't change these wheel studs are also five on four and a half now there are risks involved even with the bolt-on ones the slide-on ones I wouldn't even mess with um, I explained why but you're adding stress points okay you're bolting this to the car and then you're bolting the tire to this so essentially the, t the, the tire and wheel aren't bolted to the car at all anymore you risk that falling off and I'll explain how to avoid this if properly installed in my opinion these are just as safe as um, anything else if you install these you have to know the risks and you have to know how to install them properly um, other than that I think that's about it um, let's head out to the car I'll show you what we're working on what tools we're going to be needing and we'll go from there alright guys here's the tools we're gonna need to install our wheel spacers you're going to need a torque wrench a half inch preferably uh, sockets depending on what sizes your lug nuts are um, you will need sockets this won't work for some of this. I'll explain that. The video, the lug wrench. This is just the one out of my spare tools. I had a T wrench, but I'm not sure where it went, so that'll work. Uh, jack and jack stand. Um, probably only gonna need one jack stand if you're doing one side at a time, obviously. Uh, dikes or angle cutters, um, depending, you know however you want to, whatever you want to call them for the brake clips and I'll show you what those are and any C's now uh, this is just example I'm not going to be using any C's some people like to um, 
uh, if you're going to use it use very little just a little drop on the wheel studs um, I've heard stories and never had the experience but I've heard stories of it actually making the lug nuts come loose because there's it's too much lubrication so um, I will talk about when it's time to add it if you're going to but I won't be using it all right let's get started all right well today we're working on my 97 Mustang GT uh, I know there's condensation in that light when it warms up and dries out I'll fix it but for now this is, this is what we got it's winter time so still storming it's very dirty I've already got it jacked up put the jack stand under it very important never work on a car without a jack stand underneath next we're gonna pull the center cap off and pull the wheel off you'll notice I'm running my winter tires right now on my stock wheels um, I'll be putting these back on eventually I will be putting my summer stuff on the reason I'm putting the spacer on now and not my summer stuff at the same time is there is a car show coming up I want the spacers on there for the car show but the car show is 300 and something miles away and you don't want to just bolt on wheel spacers and then drive it for 300 miles and I'll explain why later but yeah so we want to get some miles on the spacers before we head down to the car show alright so here's the hub assembly and what's going to happen is you want to take these brake clips off now apparently these are the stock rotors because what happens is as the are rolling down the assembly line the factory will slide these brake clips on there just to hold the rotors on before they put the calipers on you want to pull these off um, a pair of dikes and you just grab underneath the little tab and yank it pull it off you don't need these anymore if you're installing aftermarket wheels you also want to pull these off um, now you also want to inspect this for corrosion there is a little bit of surface rust on here uh, I do believe I cleaned them up last time um, but you want to make sure that this contact is clean and if you're going to put any C's on here you want to put just a tiny little drop tiny tiny little drop in this case less is better don't want to put too much on every stud and screw the lug nut on get it all threaded in there alright next we're going to throw the spacer on and I'll show you how to do that alright so we have now bolted it on as you can see they're all the way down they're not going anywhere so what you're going to do is you're going to slide this on make sure you take those brake clips off don't forget about those um, and then screw these down with the lug nuts that came with the spacers um, and your uh, lug wrench unless it's a thin wall lug wrench isn't going to fit in these holes so you're going to need a socket or a regular impact socket won't work I think it has to be a thin wall I'm not sure use the torque wrench to torque it down this particular car torques at a hundred foot pounds and you're going to want to start here go in a star pattern straight across straight across until you've got all of them and then after I do a star pattern I do a circle that's personally what I do just to check them now talking about hub centric earlier hub centric means that it fits snugly around this middle piece around the hub if you don't get hub centric rings there will be a space pretty good large space in between here um, try and get hub centric rings um, I'm not gonna say they are or aren't better but I know with wheels if the wheels aren't hub centric and they don't come with uh, adapters they can cause vibrations so try and get hub centric rings um, 
but like I said, if you're going to use any C's, uh, you would have wanted to put it on, you know, just a drop, very little. Um, if you're going to use any C's on here, same thing, just a tiny, tiny little drop. You don't want to put too much, have the lug nut back off on you. But after that, now we're ready to put the wheel back on. You're going to want to make sure that the back of the wheel that's going to be contacting this surface is clean, just like we made sure that the uh, you made sure that the surface of the hub assembly was clean and there was no debris on there that can come loose and uh, cause this to wiggle loose and fall off when we get. So next we're going to put the wheel on um, and after that I'll explain a couple more things. There are some steps after putting the wheel on that we need to talk about. So, Alright, so we got the wheel on. Uh, same thing. Star pattern. Torque it the same manufacturer specs that you torqued the spacer. As you can see there's a lot more space now. If you come up here it actually sits pretty even with the fender. Um, and when I get my aftermarket stuff out on it'll uh, sit even a little bit farther out. I think it'll look pretty cool. But um, now the most important thing about these spacers is retorque. I can't stress how important retorquing actually is whether you have a set of aftermarket wheels without spacers um, or you're using spacers. You want to take the wheel off again and retorque the lug nuts holding on the spacer. Um, by doing that you're making sure that it's seating properly against the hub. If you don't do that it can come loose. I've seen it come loose before. I work at a tire shop and unfortunately we have had tires come off and they did, weren't even running spacers. So um, 10 to 25 miles in between retorques and I would retorque the spacer at least three times. Um, same same specs in this case it'd be a hundred foot pounds. I also torque these to a hundred foot pounds in a star pattern and then a circle. Um, other than that I think we're pretty much done. Um, but yeah should look pretty cool once I have the aftermarket stuff on. Um, yeah, uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, subscribe up top. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down at the bo bottom. Um, like I said, the instructions to do this, if you want to print them off, will be in my blog. Links in the description. If you uh, want the link to my Facebook and my MSN is also in the description. If you have any questions, go ahead, add me. I'll try and help you out best I can. I'm not a mechanic, so. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, retorque. Alright. Uh, you guys have a good one.